New Wings of Fire OC challenge. Let's go. If you're a boy, wings folded. If you're a girl, draw the wings open. If you identify as something else, it's your choice. If you were born in the fall, your OC can be a Nightwing or Mudwing. If you were born in the spring, they can be a Rainwing or Silkwing. If you were born in the summer, they could be a Sandwing or a Hivewing. And if you were born in the winter, they can be an Icewing or a Suitwing. If your ears are pierced, make your dragon have an earring. If your ears are not pierced, have them have a necklace. If you have a dog, give them a large body. If you have a cat, give them a medium body. And if you have no pets or another pet, give them a small body. You guys can choose the rest. As many Wings of Fire fans know, the Sandwing Secession War touched the lives of thousands of dragons across the continent of Pyria. It killed thousands, ripped apart families, ruined lives. It scarred dragons, scarred the landscape, and changed the history of Pyria forever. Today I'm going to be talking about Orings, an OC that I made several years back that is one of the lives touched by the Sandwing Secession War. I hope you will sit and listen to her story, and I hope that you will find it is one worth telling. At an early stage in her life, Oryx's parents figured out that there was something off about their dragonette. She was not responding when they called to her, nor would she look up at any sudden loud noises near to her, as would be the general fight-or-flight instinct for dragonettes of her age. They quickly realized that their dra that their daughter, their dragonette, was deaf. Because she lived in a largely uneducated area, and deafness is not common among dragons, as blindness isn't, she was not able to find many ways to communicate. One of the only ways that she found was lip reading, but as with dragons do not really have lips, it is generally very hard to tell what a dragon is saying, and she only uses it in last ditch situations. Another way that was found was from her teachers, some of which had studied either closer to the palace, in the palace, or with other tribes. She had found from them that there was actually a whole nother language specifically for deaf dragons in which claw movements, tail movements, and ear flicks are used. She learned this language as quickly as she could, but not a lot of people knew it, so it was only useful in connecting with intelligent individuals or other deaf dragons, of which she never met any. Eventually, the Sandwing Secession War started, and her parents quickly joined Blaze's side as they were terrified of both blister and burn and scared of what would happen to the kingdom if they were crowned. They died quickly. But after a while, Oryx decided that she would join up as well after seeing many propaganda posters saying that soldiers were needed. At this point in the war, Blaze's side was suffering. There were not a lot of soldiers, and she did not have enough dragon power to defeat the gr rapidly growing Blister army. She joined, and because of her deafness, she was placed as a foot soldier, and was generally thrown at battles with no regard for her life, as well as the lives of other dragons considered weak or cowardly. In one of these battles, she was injured, breaking a hand, claw, and was sent to a medic's tent. Because most Sandwings at the time were uneducated, especially those joining Blaze's side, which were gen most of the medics, if not all of the medics, were ice wings. She was tended to by an ice wing, a tall, thin, nervous looking gentleman who had a long set of scars across his snout, gouged deep into the flesh. As she was getting her claw tended to, he kept talking, but she never responded as she couldn't really see his face and had no way of responding back to him. He finally looked at her, pointed at his ear, and then cut a claw across his throat, asking if she was mute, or it couldn't hear him. She pointed to her ear and shook her head. Suddenly, surprisingly, at this, the dragon raised his claws and signed hello. She was confused at first, but then realized, Ice Wings were probably the ones who had invented this. They were one of the m most advanced dragon cultures. 
So, she signed back. And that's how she met Wolf, her best friend. Wolf helped her quickly rise by recommending her to some of the generals. She didn't go far, but enough that she would get out of most of the very dangerous battles and into the ones that Wolf was also present in so that he could help her avoid being injured. In one of these such battles, she was caught off guard. It had been months since she and Wolf had first started corresponding, and they had formed a very close friendship at this time. Normally in battles, they stuck right next to each other so that he could signal to her, to her or touch her when something was about to happen. Unfortunately, he got led off in a skirmish against a set of Skywings and Mudwings. A Mudwing and its sibs led him off, corralling him, and she was caught unawares by a Skywing catching her back. It ripped open her left wing, leaving a very large set of claw marks, and she plummeted. Wolf was able to catch her in time to avoid her getting a snapped neck, but unfortunately her wing was mauled beyond use. Because of this wound, she was no longer able to, do, to survive in the army, and was going to be put back in the foot soldiers, or worse, killed. Because of this, Wolf stole her away in the middle of the night, and they relocated to Possibility. In Possibility, Wolf used his medic training to quickly become one of the highest ranking doctors, even though he had not been anything more than a nurse or field medic in the Icewing army. He then dedicated his time in Possibility and all of his studying into how to create a prosthetic wing or wing helper to help Orangs, who at this point could only glide or fly very, very short distances, nothing close to the long, soaring flights that she had loved, to, in which she could escape into her own silence, and then recently into wolf silence as well. Eventually, after the war had ended, they both realized that they were a lot closer than most friends would be. Orings really loved and appreciated Wolf's efforts to fix her wing, and Wolf found that for someone who couldn't talk, she had a lot of amazingly interesting things to say. And that's where they are today, living happily together in possibility, awaiting the day that Wolf figures out how to create a prosthetic for Orings so that they can go flying together once again. <laughs>